ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Vivekananda Study Circle, the Extramural Lectures Team, the Center for Innovation, and Indo-German Center for Sustainability, I extend a hearty welcome to the children, the faculty, and students to this lecture by one of the greatest visionaries of this era and inspiring leader, Bharat Ratna, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. is a ray of hope which guides us towards the light of success. We shall begin to raise function by invoking the blessings of Lord Almighty. Let us all rise for the prayer song. Astoma Sadgamaya Tamsoma Jyotir Gamaya Mrityodma Amritam Gamaya Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makashit Rukha Bhagavave Om Shanti 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 As a token of our love and affection, May I now request the head boy and head girl of Vanavani School, M. Sridhar Babu and N. Kasturi, to present a bouquet to Dr. Abdul Kalam. May I now request Dr. Abdul Kalam to offer floral tribute to Swami Vivekananda. I now call upon Mr. Raghavan of the Extramural Lectures team to introduce Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam to the gathering. A renowned scientist and engineer, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam served as 11th President of India from 2002 to 2007. Being a man of vision who is always full of ideas aimed at the development of the country, he has inspired people across generations and was popularly called the People's President. <laughs> Dr. Kalam played a pivotal organizational and technical role. Dr. Kalam played a pivotal organizational and technical role in India's Pokhara nuclear test in 1998. He is the Chancellor of Indian Institute of Space Science and Technology, Thiruvananthapuram, a professor, of, a professor at Anna University, Chennai, and an adjunct faculty at many other academic institutions. Dr. Kalam's contribution to public service, apart from being an eminent scientist, a gifted engineer, a visionary, and a humanitarian, has seen him being bestowed with numerous honors and awards. He became the first Asian to be honored with the Hoover Medal, America's top engineering prize. He was awarded Padma Bhushan and Padma Vibhushan before being honored with our country's highest civilian award, Bharat Ratna, in 1997, for his work in the show, DRDO, and his role as a scientific advisor to the Indian government. Well known for his inspirational and visionary ideas, Dr. Kalam's famous books like Wings of Fire, Ignited Minds, and India 2020 have inspired millions. Words alone are not enough to express Dr. Kalam's charisma. Hence, I conclude this introduction here and request Dr. Kalam to begin the today's lecture on creativity and youth power. Thank you. Friends, good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, I would like to say that I'm very sorry uh, that I got uh, delayed uh, because I got to be a big young crowd. I could not come out of it. Okay. Uh, two student group, so I'm sorry for it. So we will compensate some way. Uh, first, I would like to greet Professor Anand, uh, members of the faculty, and dear students, to every one of you, my greetings. And this great day of, uh, of a beautiful day of uh, thinking about uh, Swami Vekaranda, I'm very happy to see young people. I am delighted to be here at the Indian Institute of Technology Madras and address the members of this renowned place of learning and other guests present here, my greeting to you, my friends. Uh, before I start, I would like to say this IIT Madras is very close to my heart and many ways because my professor 
uh, who taught me a design of uh, aircraft. Uh, he he became the director of this uh, IIT Madras, uh, Professor Pandale, and he was my guru. Uh, it's a fantastic guru because he used to take class 7.30 to 10.30 in Madras Institute of Technology. 7.30 to 3 hours class. Have you come across the 3 hours class? Have you? Have you? <laughs> so he used to take every alternate day, he used to take 3 hours class. Friends, before I begin my address, I would like to share a thought with all the youth present here. Uh, I have uh, met so far uh, 11 million youth present, 11 million youth like you in a decade's time uh, from various parts of the country. I have met and the, what the, in India and abroad, I have seen their hopes and experienced their pains, walked with their aspirations and heard through their, and their despair also. All this experience made me to learn something about them, which I would like to share with you. Shall I? I learned, carefully hear me what I'm saying. I learned, what did I learn from the youth of 11 million people? I learned every youth wants to be unique. Every youth wants to be unique. That is you. Every youth wants to be unique, that is you. But the world around, uh, around you is doing its best day and night to make you just everybody else. Now, now, the question is whether you want to be you or everybody else. You? You want to be you? Yes. Not everybody else. Now, if the question be like everybody else is convenient at the first glance, but not satisfying in the long vision. The challenge, therefore, my young friends, is that you have to fight the hardest battle. You have to fight the hardest battle, which any human being can ever imagine to fight. And never stop fighting until you arrive at your destined place that is the unique you. To get, to, to get the unique you, it's a big battle. The battle means you don't need to take a gun. The battle means you have to have four unique things, four unique tools you must have in that battle. Uh, one is you have to set the goal. The second one is acquire the knowledge continuously. And third one, it's a